Now, we always do, every Christmas, we do a launch of vegetables, we do a launch of creator cards. And the pressure is on every year to up our game on the previous year. You, you guys expect it of us. However, what happens that, bear in mind, last year we came up with the double-sided die technology. So what we've got is we've now got the opportunity to get twice as much for our money, which means all the designs that I've wanted to do but not been able to, because they would have been cost prohibitive. I mean, like, like, look at this one. This one we just absolutely love. I've had visions of this for ages, but we've just that never... That was a delete, individually. Delete. We've just never been able to think about something like this because it would be too expensive to put together a whole collection like this. Whereas now, because you're getting two for the price of one, don't need to worry about it. You literally get both dies in at one pack. Now, I'm going to start with that demonstration, okay? So, I'm going to start with that one first. So, let's get, if we get the die out, here we go. One side has got those beautiful trees on, as you see, and the other side has got that fabulous stag scene. Now, here's how the double-sided dies work, Joe. What you're going to do is you're going to take two pieces of card, so we've got here the trees, which I'm going to cut in the blue glitter card, so you would, don't, it always confuses you when you're seeing the underside of the die. You just worry about the fact that we've got the trees, you've got the blue glitter card, so we're going to cut that into there, right? On this side, we've got the gorgeous deer, we've got the bit round the outside. That we're going to do with Silver Centura Pearl. So what you do is you sandwich your die between your two pieces of cardstock. Now, when it comes to double-sided dies, you must have the double-sided die plates. So what I generally say from here is once you've got that sandwich, that then sandwiches in between your two double-sided die plates. However, these dies are quite intricate. So what I'm going to do is, uh, where are we cutting? I think the, the glitter card's quite straightforward, but this side is a little bit more intricate. So you put the die on and slightly tilt it a little bit. Can you see? Just slightly tilted. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut into the metal plate with this one. So I add my metal plate in there as well and then put the top double-sided cutting plate on. Now, these are made out of fiberglass, these double-sided cutting plates, so they're not going to warp. They're going to last you a long time, right? That all sandwiches in between your regular plates. Now, all of these dies will fit in your Gemini Junior. If you want to use them in your large Gemini, you can. You then want the large Gemini double-sided plate, or you can use your half-size plate in your larger machine, bear in mind. You've always got that option to rotate them around a little bit. I can hear how hard that machine's working. It's because, bear in mind, it's an intricate die to start with, but then it's another intricate die in the back, so we're asking it to basically cut twice as hard. Now, watch this when we lift this off, okay? These, if I just take my little poker tool out, you'll see this all releasing out. I mean, it is just fabulous. And even though this is a really delicate die, I'm just being really gentle around the outside here. You can see how well that is releasing. Now, I know sometimes you look and think, hang on, there's some trees in the background there. What's all that about? That is just the support on the underside of the die. So when we make double-sided dies, we always need to put support on one side to support what's on the other side. So there's that one there. Isn't it absolutely gorgeous? That's that one there. And again, I've just popped all those bits out and that has given me the outer piece. Then we do exactly the same with the little piece underneath. Now, do you want some top tips on putting this together, Joe? Okay. Yes, please. So, when I'm sticking it together, what I find is because I'm going to put this, if you remember, I'll show you the card that we're making. It's got a dome front to it. So, when you're sticking the dome front, what you might find is the edges may lift a little bit. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some of that really nice, fine, double sided red liner tape that we have. And I'm going to go right down the edges because it's going to give me this lovely finish to it. Uh, if I go right down the edges and just get them taken off, okay? So I'm going straight down here, red liner tape on both sides, so that, that we can make sure it's going to stick really, really well. I think the other, the other two will do, the top and bottom will all be fine, but that's just going to give me a really, really good base stick. Then what I'm going to do, to get an all over stick jaw, I'm going to bring in my homemade spray booth. Oh no, it's got a name. Booth. It's got a name. Oh, this is it. It's Go Brenda on. the spray booth. Brenda the spray yeah. booth. Right, so I will pop these in Brenda. Not Definitely not Brenda the box, Brenda the spray booth. Brenda the spray booth, yeah. right. I think I'll just, because this might be a little bit of a faff to lift off later, I'll just start lifting off the back from my red liner tape, okay? 
Right, here we go. So I've got that slightly lifted. What I'm going to do is, just to make my life a little bit easy, I'm going to cover them in stick and spray. So this is stick and stay. This is our permanent adhesive. So I'm giving it a nice spray all over the back there. Permanent adhesive on there, which means I don't have to faff on with bits of glue everywhere, right? The other option is you could run them through a Xyron, or you could just cut them out of a card that's already got adhesive, like our adhesive backed pearl card or um, glitter card stocks. Right, let's get the rest of the card done. So what you're going to do is you're going to cut a piece of cardstock, which is just, if you look, ever so slightly taller than what your die is. But then on the sides, look what I've done. I've scored down about half an inch on either side so that your cardstock's just ever so slightly larger than this. But then you've got those flaps on either end. And what you're going to do is you're just going to get a pen or a pencil, draw all the way around your die. That will give you the perfect way to cut out. The other top tip I've got, Joe, is you could actually just cut out the die from this piece of card and then oh, it will yeah. cut the perfect size base. Now, when you do that, watch, I can do that thing that they do on Instagram. <laughs> there we go, right? So if I get that, it's as if by magic. I bet people wish they could do that in their craft rooms at home, you know, just oh, the yeah. magic the magic shopping telly click and it was there. Yeah, I wish I could do that with me ironing, never mind <laughs> in my craft room, right? Now, let's have a look. I'm going to give this a nice little crease down the edges here because this is the bit that you want to be perfect with the dome front. So it's worth taking your time, getting these spot on, opening this out, piece of acetate and again I've used that ultra fine red liner tape now look at that all I'm doing is I'm popping my um porky tool underneath the top surface of the red liner tape it just makes it easier to lift off now I know you can't see that there but trust me when I say I've got hold of that little bit of acetate and then that will go into the base there so it goes behind so that we can now stick onto the front of this so if I bring in that first piece that we had which is the one we did in the glitter card that time for the propellant to evaporate off the top there that will fit absolutely perfectly inside here there we go so it's sticking onto the acetate all right you're not sticking it onto the cardstock at the side we're sticking it flat down onto the acetate and that spray adhesive gives you that really nice overall stick now i think that's quite nice just as a base card on its own that you could use that with some of your other dies on top nice background piece so look at this, what I've done is I've got that, where we put that red liner tape down the side, it's just going to give me a brilliant stick at the sides, make sure it doesn't lift, even if someone puts it, you know, if this gets displayed on top of a mantelpiece with a little bit of heat coming up or something, that's going to stick perfectly up the sides. Then what we're going to do is we've got this, just make sure this is all folded over nicely. I'm going to bring just a piece of plain white cardstock and I've got some lovely just glitter card. Because if you look, if you look through it onto the white, it's all right look through it onto the glitter oh yeah oh, now you're talking door. now you're talking onto the glitter you see so a little bit of tape onto there lie that down and then i'm going to just in for a penny in for a pound if we're getting this card stuck perfectly i'm going to use me red liner tape on this one as well so again i mean you know i'm a big fan of using the tape pen all the time joe have i got me slightly larger uh, yes i have here we go. You get different rolls at different sizes, you see. Always use the biggest one you can. You'll get a, a better, bigger stick. When so would you choose to use it over a tape pen, a uh, red liner, Sarah? Well, acetate, definitely. Okay. Um, uh, onto glitter card. But then also, when I'm doing a dome card like this, I've just learned from experience over time that it, they look fine when I make them now, but then when you gift them to somebody, what will happen is, um, they, they'll inevitably, this will be what we call the mantelpiece pleaser. This will mm. be the one that takes pride of place. And if it is on the mantelpiece in front of the fire, then by the time you get that little bit of heat coming up from the fire, you know, it can dry out your glue over time. So this way, by using the red liner tape, you are literally getting the best possible stick that you can on there. That's never going to come off there, right? That's going to be stuck good and proper onto there. And it just gives it that really lovely professional finish, but you know it's going to last as well. And if, if you are making cards to sell, for example, I mean, look how, that's, look how, how much structure that's got that card to it. Yet nothing is going to lift off because we've used that tape all the way around. Now, that's nice as a, as a dome card on its own. What I really like is when I've just taken and made a slightly larger card. So can you see, I've cut my card shorter at the front, wider at the back, so that what we can do is just use a couple of little bits 
of um, paper down the back, just basically, Joe, to, to better display the, um, the dome on the front of the card. So I'm going to pop this down the side here, and then I'm going to pop the other one just down the side at the other edge, and it gives us a nice grounding for our base card here. So we've got that there. And then, do you think, I think, I think I'll do, I think while I'm, while I'm going, I'll red line and tape the back of this as well. So can you see, I'm going to go over the join. So we're going over the join there and just getting plenty of this tape on. Or the other option is you could, um, you could put a little bit of tape down the sides, but then also add in a little bit of wet glue. So your tacky glue or something into the middle. And that means even if um, over time that, you know, the heat of the tape does lift, you've got the tacky glue inside. That is that. You see, that's, that's just perfect now. Perfect. This is, if you want to get a perfect dome-fronted card, there's a couple of cracking little top tips. And then all I'm going to do is, again, a little bit of tape onto the back of here. Get this stuck on the inside. Oh, I was going to put, I was going to show the other one. That's quite pretty. No, I'll go this way. We will go that way. Yep. We'll just stick some gems over there. Right. Tape in there. Stick Sean's this Sean's asking, Sarah, mm -hmm. uh, for, the do for the dome cards, how much thinner should the flat back piece be in relation to the front curved part? Oh, brilliant question. Depends on how big you want your dome to be. Okay. So for a dome this shape, I made it about three quarters of an inch shorter. But it's all depending on the size of your front and also how much dome you want on it. I wanted a small enough dome that I could put this into a three-dimensional envelope en box, which means I need my dome to be less than an inch, right? So let's have a little look. I'm going to stick this down, a little bit of embellishment down the side as well here, Joe. And this will Cindy just Cindy Sushis, she is blooming excited for these, Sarah. They Thank are you. Hands up cute. I'm not sure I've heard that term before, but I quite like it. Oh, it's hands, hands up cute. cute. Hands up cute. I like it. There we go. Um, just down the edge there. And then I mean, that, that I just think looks absolutely spectacular. 